Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, we make videos on MBBS, we discuss the syllabus here, we talk about many more things that you need to know about MBBS and of course various study materials are available for MBBS, PG and whatnot. So on today's video, let's get started with the syllabus for MBBS and that too for Kathmandu University. I have already made a video for syllabus of MBBS for Trivan University. If you haven't watched that video and want to, the link is in the description. So this was one of the most awaited videos. So let's get started. Okay, first of all, the TU and KU are two different universities in Nepal and Kathmandu University is totally different from Trivan University. Uh, Trivan University is year-based and Kathmandu University is semester-based. So you will be having nine semesters and basic science will be there for two years that is four semesters clinical science will be there for 2.5 years that is five semesters equivalent to 4.5 years of your mbbs followed by one year of internship and that will take your mbbs to 5.5 years all right so you will be having four board exams during this 4.5 years of your time now let us see the board exams all right so you will be having your first board exams in second semester second board exams in your fourth semester and your fifth semester will be honeymoon semester right you will be transiting from your basic science to clinical science so you will chill over there and this will be followed by your board exams at the end of your seventh semester followed by your board exams at the end of your ninth semester then we will head on to the basic science, which will be your first to fourth semester. You will be having all the subjects that you are ha having in Trivan University, that is anatomy, physiology, pharmacology, patho, biochemistry, microbiology, community medicine. And there is one interesting subject over there at KU, which is introduction to clin clinical medicine, where you'll be taught about history taking, you'll be taught about interaction with the patients and many more. But, but, but the exams are quite interesting. You won't be giving separate theory papers for the subjects mentioned above, but you will be giving the exams in an integrated manner. Yeah, you will be giving 10 papers during this four semester time. And let me remind you, you will be having board exams at the end of each year, but the semester's exam will continue in between. That means lots and lots of endless exams. So in your second semester, at the end of your second semester, which is your first board exam, you will be giving paper one to four, followed by exam at your fourth semester, where you will be giving paper five to ten. But these papers won't be separate, but in an integrated manner. Let's find out what they are. So in your first year, that is at the end of your second semester, you'll be giving human biology, genetics, immunology, immune system, followed by autonomic nervous system, musculoskeletal system, integumentary system, then cardiovascular system and hematopoietic system. This will include your blood vessels and cells. All right. So and, and this fourth paper will be about the respiratory system. This is what you have to appear at the end of your second semester. And this will be followed by other exams from paper 5 to paper 10, which will comprise of various systems such as GIT, renal, reproductive, CNS, clinical medicine, community medicine that you will be giving at the end of your fourth semester. So the practical exams will be quite different from the theory exams. Let us discuss the theory exams. The theory exams will comprise of 80 marks, where you will be having MCQs for 30 marks. See, in KU, MCQs are quite important and they make you prepare for the next round of exams that you will be having in the future, all right? This doesn't happen in TU because in TU you will be giving only all, all the theory exams by mugging up huge amount of content. But meanwhile, you will be forgetting how to do your MCQs and you will be have, having 30 marks of short answer questions and 20 marks of PBQs, which is problem-based questions. They will give you certain case scenario uh, where you have to identify the disease and write about it. It's quite interesting. And uh, this will be followed by another 20 marks of internal assessment. Let's talk about practical too. The practical will be separate for each subject. That means the theory will be integrated. But when your days come for practical, if you are having anatomy for your second year, let's say, then you will be giving anatomy for entire thing. All right. Anatomy for GI, renal, repro, CNS, everything will be compiled at one place. Similarly, for pathology, you will be giving practicals. For GI, renal, repro, CNS, everything at one place. Got it? 
So the practicals will contain OSCEs, VIVAs, logbooks, and when you are posted into your clinical years, that means from your fifth, fifth semester onwards, yeah, you'll be having clinical cases. And the practical will be of 80 marks, followed by 20 marks of internal assessment, both for theory and practical. See, this doesn't happen in TU, all right? You'll be having a sole uh, 100 marks of practical, 200 marks of practical at a time. Uh, to find out more, watch the video in the description for TU. So this is about the theory and practical. And similarly, the community medicine will be having community development program, family health exercise, health service management. The basic difference of this with TU uh, community medicine is that the community medicine programs in three one universities are quite longer. They will run for three weeks and this health service management will run for six weeks. But this doesn't happen in case of uh, KU, you will be having these programs in second year, third year, and it depends on the college uh, community medicine department. They will post you for several weeks at a certain place, and you will be given some tasks that you have to perform and present to your college department at the end of each field visit. And before moving into the clinical years, uh, let me remind you that students failing in three or more subjects will have to repeat the course of that year. Yeah, you heard it right. If you fail, uh, let's say in this second year paper, there are almost six papers that you have to appear. And if you fail in three or more of them, then you will be continuing in second year, second year while your friends will get posted into third year and higher onwards. So the distinction for KU is 80%. And the pass percentage is 50%. You'll be requiring 75% of attendance for your theory practicals. And you will require a minimum of 50% in each of your theory and practical to get passed. So this is a total of your eligibility criteria. Now let's head on to... Yeah, done with this. Now let's head on to the clinical years, which will comprise of five semesters, starting from your fifth semester to ninth semester. Now let's talk about this fifth semester, which is also known as honeymoon semester. You will be reading medicine, pediatrics, surgery, gynecology, which are also known as major subjects. That these subjects will be your major papers while you will be appearing your final year board exams. Yes, those exams at the end of your ninth semester. All right. Now comes sixth semester where you will be reading all these subjects including your major subjects, followed by community medicine, forensic medicine, your ENT and I. Also, you'll be continuing these subjects in your seventh semester. All right. But you'll be giving your board exams at the end of seventh semester only for community medicine, forensic medicine, ophthalmology plus ENT. And you will continue into your eighth semester which is also a part of your fourth year remember what i told you earlier you won't be having any board exams for your fifth semester but you will be giving your sixth semester and seventh semester combined at the end of your seventh semester which is also your uh, fourth year after you will have be having your board exams here then you will head on to your Eighth semester study and exams might be quite difficult for you to catch hold on of but stick to the fact that you will be having your board exams in second semester fourth semester seventh semester and ninth semester now we are heading on to ninth semester uh, so you'll be reading all the subjects for an entire year and you'll be appearing your board exams for all the major subjects but a twist over here is that you will be having allied subjects as well for medicine you will be having radio psychiatry derma but you won't be having separate practical exams for the subjects as you do here at tu all right in tu you will be giving separate exams for majors as well as allied subjects similarly in surgery you will be having dental anesthesia and orthopedics while you will be appearing for theory papers with respect to all these subjects, you will be appearing only for practicals uh, for the major subjects only. But in surgery, you will be ge getting combined case with surgery plus orthopedics and medicine will be combined as a whole. There will be no such separate practical for psychiatry and derma. And this will be followed by 
your one year of rotating internship and during your clinical years also you'll be having theory exams for 80 marks practical for 80 marks followed by 2020 internal assessment each the 80 marks will again comprise of mcqs for 30 marks short answer questions for 30 marks and pbqs for 20 marks this will be followed by oski viva clinical cases uh, there will be long and short clinical cases you will be having marks for logbook as well uh, the viva is low in number quite compared to TU because in TU during your final year board exams you'll be having practical for surgery and medicine for 200 marks each and that's a quite long exam so I hope you get uh, the entire essence of this video you are able to catch on with all the subjects that you are going to study I have tried my best to explain all the marks and marking system over here so yeah all the best for all the students who are going to choose whether KU or TU the main core concept behind succeeding in all these examinations is discipline persistence and a lot of hard work so if you liked our video stay tuned with us for more videos i'll try to upload as soon as i get over with my exams